Hey guys, Joe East here to explain the entire freaking world to you. The election. Far from over. Far from over. No matter what you hear, no matter what the media bullshitters say, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Here's what's going on, guys. This is gamed out on the board. What's going on and what's going to happen. With probabilities, right? So uh, nothing is certain, right? I, I could die tonight. I could die tomorrow morning. What's the probabilities? Okay. So the election can... There's many things that can happen here. We are in 2020. Shit happens in 2020. So anything can happen. So let's put probabilities down here. So the, there's two keys in the election situation um, that nothing else matters except these two keys. And no matter what anybody says, no matter what any talking heads say, the two issues are Trump does did not concede. That's the key. All right. If he concedes, it's over with. I think everybody knows that, right? He did not concede. That is a powerful signal. Number two is the court cases along this trajectory right here, which I will explain to you. This is the second key. So in other words, Trump not conceding opens the door to get into the car. Okay, if Trump concedes, you can't even get in the car. But if Trump does not concede, you're getting in the car, and the next key to crank the engine for him to go to re-election is based on this trajectory right here. <laughs> So basically on November 7th, by the way, I put at the top in red, Trump did not concede. That's a key upon which everything else is based. This next sector is this key number two. And this is why um, once you're done with this little analysis that I'm doing, you'll know that most of the talking heads are full of shit. Okay, so Alito, which is Supreme Court Justice, on November 7th ordered... Pennsylvania to separate the late arriving ballots. Ru Rudy Giuliani made a big deal, said if the late arriving ballots get invalidated, Pennsylvania flips to Trump. That's the core strategy here. They want to invalidate, I think it's like 300,000 ballots or something. Go check out the number. I don't know exactly what it is. That is the key again. We're, we're going, it's a big key, but the key is very, very important. Now, a Supreme Court justice made this order to separate the ballots arriving after a certain time. And the reason being, I think it's state law that uh, elections must be uh, performed according to the, the text of the law. And I think that's why Alito ordered this separation. Supreme Court justice. Remember, why does this matter? Supreme Court justice, when we get here, it matters. Okay. So, Trump just lost a case in state court uh, challenging some ballots, and I think it's the same ballots here. Well, what are his chances of winning in that uh, court? I put it about 20%. I think most people said uh, his chances of winning that case in the local state courts because the, the judge panel was uh, either fanatically against him or uh, partisan or some sort of judge panel, local, uh, the state courts, Okay. So after you get rejected by the state courts, where do you go? You appeal. You go to some appeals court, all right? I think it, this was a, I think this is a federal court, and we're right here, right now, okay? This is where we are in the second key. He is not conceded, and this is the second key. So it goes to an appeal court, and it's to be determined how they're going to rule. If these guys invalidate 300,000 ballots tomorrow, the election is almost over with. That's that's the key. You get you get what I'm saying here. <laughs> if Pennsylvania flips on those 300 by a ruling here, it's 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 game over uh, almost. Trump needs a couple of more electoral college votes to win. But essentially, whenever if this goes Trump's way, it's almost game over. I put that at about 60 percent. The appeals court, uh, I think it's federal. And Trump has a lot of power because he appointed several federal judges. So we're getting closer to Trump power of folks that appointed him. And remember, 
a Supreme Court justice is rarely contradicted by the appellate courts who really want to preserve their um, reputation for not getting reversed later down down the line for appeal to the Supreme Court. Okay, let's say he let's say he loses at the appeals court. Where does it go next? To the Supreme Court of the USA. Trump owns the Supreme Court. So whatever the law says here, and it's very likely Alito, who is on the Supreme Court, knew what the law said, and that's why he said separate these ballots, because downstream we might have to rule on this if shit gets crazy. Okay, So if it goes to the Supreme Court, I put the odds of it going to Trump favor at about 80%. Okay? All right? Now you, now you see where the election is. Now you see why Trump... Uh, did not concede, and everybody around him is not worried. All right? Like I said, he did not concede, and this is the key. If he loses at Supreme Court here, um, he either goes home and concedes, or he does military action and uh, overthrows uh, the result uh, with guns. And this being 2020, I... I will consider that as a possibility that this might get military. Okay. Um, that sounds scary, but it's a possibility. It's 2020, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, <laughs> and Uranus, or a conjunct in a Capricorn or uh, wherever it is, maybe near Aquarius, but they're conjuncts. So shit's going to happen this year, and we're not done with it. Um, okay. If he loses, let's just say he goes home. Let, let's try not to think about the military option here, but that, that is one of the options, which I'm not going to game out the military option. Um, but if he wins, what happens at the Supreme Court? And it's highly likely, again, I put it 60%, the appeals court is going to go for him. I put it at 80% of the Supreme Court goes for him. So it's getting, it's looking really good the further you go down this line. And if he wins, what happens? Pennsylvania flips. Now, in Anglo-Saxon law, a court decision is primarily based on, number one, the text of the law, and number two, the text of previous decisions on that law. That's called precedent in Anglo-Saxon law. So if Pennsylvania flips and Trump wins, that sets a precedent that has been established in law. A ruling is written down, coded up, and this is now a precedent upon which subsequent decisions must take into consideration when they're ruling. So once the precedent gets established of a flip and a win, say, late arriving votes can't be counted, or votes arriving after election day can't be counted, so therefore that sets a precedent. Oh, there's a cutoff date somewhere. You can't just keep counting votes for 10 years, right? <laughs> you can't keep counting votes for, for a year. You can't keep counting votes past a, a deadline. We need a deadline, right? So there's got to be a deadline in these other states. Uh, whether or not Pennsylvania's deadline is the same as the other states, there's got to be a deadline. you got to stop counting at some time, okay? And usually that's established probably in the, in the code of the local state, right? So once this uh, precedent is established and Pennsylvania flips, Trump needs one more state, to flip, so for him to win. And once the precedent's established, there's a bunch of, like, let's say five court cases. One out of five is all he's got to win. Just one out of five, and that's it. This is why the election is not over. Now, the talking heads, or the, the, the idiots, um, that are trying to use propaganda to push their own agenda... They either, number one, don't have the ability to game things out beyond one move, or they won't because it uh, goes against their propaganda narrative, okay? Probably they don't have the patience and the IQ to game stuff out like this. Say, okay, here we are right here. What's the next step? Okay, we go here. All right, what's the probabilities? Okay, we already lost that one, so it's 100%. He lost, okay? Boom. Appeals court. Okay, see, we're already two levels deep. M the majority of people can't think this deeply. 
beyond one move ahead in front of their face. This is chess. you got to think 10 steps ahead, game it out, all the way to the end. Then you're a player. This is what is called strategy. And, and if Trump gamed this out all the way to the end, which you know he did, a lawyer has to do this in some form. If he didn't think he had a chance to win going through all this, you know he, you know, if the chance was zero, he probably would say, screw it. I'm going to make another couple of billion dollars. But Trump being a winner already, if there was a small chance, say 20% he can win, he'll go for it because that's the kind of gambling man he is. But it's even better than 20%. I'm saying it's about 60 here and 80 here. So the chances of him winning are really freaking high really high. Uh, And if you take the least amount of chance, I will just say, uh, let's say you ignore the 80%, just say he has a 60% shot of this all coming through and he winning the election. Well, are you going to take the 60% shot to win the fucking president election? Yeah, of course. You're not stupid. No matter what the media talking heads say, the courts generally don't care what the media says. They're not supposed to. Uh, Let's hope they don't, but they're not supposed to care what the court says. All right, so this is where we are. Again, there's two keys here. First, I'm going to say Trump did not concede. That's the key. Very big key beyond which no other key can work. And the second key to get through the second door of victory is this diagram right here. Okay? So there you go, guys. This is what real winners do. (laughs) You game it out. You play the game. You think a million steps ahead of your opponent. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Goodbye.